Hello everyone and thank you for your interest in Lambda Research Corporation and our optical design and analysis software. We offer three different programs for optical design and analysis. Oslo, Raviz, and TracePro. Oslo is our lens and imaging system design and optimization software and typically this is sequential ray tracing. Raviz is our add-in for SolidWorks and it allows you to do optomechanical design and ray tracing directly in SOLIDWORKS. And then TracePro is our non-sequential 3D solid modeling based optical design optimization and analysis program. Many times when you're faced with an optical design problem, you might need more than one type of optical software in order to solve the problem. For example, you may need to do a lens design and you want to use an optical design program. You may then need to add mechanical structure to that. So you want something that's well suited for optomechanical design. And then lastly, you want to do a full optical analysis of the complete system. Uh, using a methodology like this allows each program to do what it does best. Now, in terms of our software, this could be starting out in Oslo for the lens design, moving then to Raviz to do the optomechanical design in SolidWorks, and then doing the full optical analysis in TracePro. So to kind of show these steps, uh, what I want to work through this afternoon is a fluorescence microplate reader example, and then show how we can use the program for each of those steps. So here's the system we're going to look at. It's basically two parts. We have an excitation beam where light illuminates a sample. It's a fluorescent sample. And then we have an emission beam here, or an emission leg, where light is collected from the fluorescence and then focused onto the detector. So what we wind up doing here is we're going to use Oslo for the lens design. We will then use Raviz to do the optomechanical design in SolidWorks. We can also run a quick ray trace directly in SolidWorks to make sure our rays are going where we want them to. And then lastly, we'll bring that model into TracePro and do a full optical analysis. So with that, let's actually do a live demo and I'll show you the three programs and how you can use them together. For the first step of the process, we're going to use Oslo. And Oslo is going to allow us to design the lenses that we need. Now the goal of the lens is to take the light from our source and collimate it. Now we're also going to use this same lens in other parts of the system, for example, to focus light onto the sample and collect light from the sample and then focus light onto the detector. And the goal is to use the same lens for all of those parts of the design. So the initial lens is a spherical lens. It has a 60 millimeter radius of curvature on the front, 10 millimeter radius of curvature on the back, four millimeters thick with an aperture radius of six uh, millimeters. The object height is set at 0 0.707, which is a good, good choice for modeling, let's say an LED chip that might be about one millimeter by one millimeter. My material is silica and my wavelengths are, are sort of centered around that 0.515 uh, range, which is about where this system's going to work for now. Now, if I look at my initial performance here, it's not very good. So we could look at optimizing this, trying to improve this system. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to apply a variable to these radius of curvatures here. So I'm going to allow them to change during the design process. Now when I want to do an optimization, I need to have a goal. And in this case, we're going to set operands here. And I've already set up the operand table, but it's fairly straightforward. It's a axial ray slope error here. And then all of these other parameters are actually the Oslo spot size wavefront, the built-in operand that's in Oslo. And I can click here. I can either type ITE for iterate, or I can click iterate. And we can see that the design really doesn't change that much. It improves a little bit, but it doesn't get that much better. 
So the next step might be, what if we apply an A-sphere to this surface? So quite easy to do. I can click here, choose polynomial A-sphere, standard A-sphere. And I'm going to give it an initial value for the fourth order term, 1 to the minus 12. Accept that. Now, I need to make sure I have variables for this, because previously I had these two curvature variables. And if I click variables here, in this example, I've already predefined the variables. But AD, AE, AF, and AG for surface 2 are the 4th, 6th, 8th, and 10th order aspheric coefficients, respectively. So now I can just repeat the, the optimization, update the graphs. And we can see we have a much better design now. So we can go forward now. We've got a design we're happy with. We can move forward. But I want to be able to use this lens in my next step, which is going to be in SOLIDWORKS. So I want to save it in a format that SOLIDWORKS can read. So I'm going to go here to File, Export Lens to CAD, save it as a step file. And I'm going to do it right here, aspheric lens dot step save. And I'm just going to overwrite my previous example. And now we're going to move on to Raviz and we're going to build the system there. So now we're in SOLIDWORKS and I have our Raviz for SOLIDWORKS add-in installed. And as I mentioned previously, Raviz allows you to apply optical properties in the SOLIDWORKS model and run some ray tracing. Now as you can see on the screen, I've already built the system here, but I'd Show you, I'd like to show you how I actually would get started. And the first thing I need is that lens we just made in Oslo. So I'm going to go to File, Open, and I'm going to open up that lens. And I'm going to run the import di diagnostics. Everything looks good, and I don't need to run feature recognition. But here's that lens. So I can use that as my starting point. In this model, I'm actually working in the assembly mode in SOLIDWORKS. So what I did is I built a series of parts representing things like the lenses, which I imported from Oslo, the optics tubes, the beam splitter, the source, my microplate down here. There's some filters inside here as well. So I took all those parts and then I made an assembly from them which is nice if you're using mul the same part in multiple spots. You don't have to rebuild it each time. So the next step, whether you're working with parts or assemblies, is applying properties. So for example, the lens. I can pick one of my lenses here, right click, go to material, and then we can apply a material property. In this case, it's the glass catalog and the material is silica. Now, if I applied properties in the part uh, or to the part, if I update the properties on that part, I can then update the, the properties in the uh, assembly mode just by going doing, doing an update. So I can edit the properties in the part file and have them automatically update in the assembly. And then sort of my last step here before I can run a ray trace is defining a source. And I'm using this little cylinder to represent a fiber. And my property in this case is a surface source property, so a light emitting surface. It's a Gaussian 10 degree half angle beam with 10 rays and a wavelength of 0.5 microns. And now I can run a ray trace. I'm just going to click trace rays. I do get this error message, which I'll explain here in just a second. It's going to pop up again. Okay. And I can turn on my ray display. Now the error message relates to the way ray tracing is done, is done in uh, Raviz. And Raviz traces rays using the capabilities of TracePro LC. And I have a fluorescent property applied to my sample, and TracePro LC does not allow for fluorescence ray tracing. So I get that error message saying there's a fluorescent property applied, but you can't do a fluorescent ray trace. What you can do in Raviz, though, is apply properties from different editions of TracePro. And you can set that up here in the Tools menu, Tools, Raviz, TracePro Edition. 
So by selecting expert, I can apply properties that are in the expert edition. Now it doesn't help me here in Rayviz, but it does help me now when I export this model to TracePro in that I don't have to reapply those properties. The model will be ready to go in TracePro. And to get that model over to TracePro, all I need to do is go File, Save As, and then I can go to my folder here, and I'm going to save this instead of a SolidWorks assembly, I'm going to save it as a TracePro OML file. And I'm just going to give it a new number here so I don't overwrite my older one. Oh, it exists, so I just overwrite that. And now I'm ready to go into TracePro and do the final analysis. Now we're in TracePro, and this is where we're going to do the optical analysis of our system. I've already opened up the file we just saved in SolidWorks, and since I was using the Rayviz add-in, all of the properties that were applied in SolidWorks are carried over with the model. So for example, if I look at one of my lenses, we can see the silica property is still there. Now one thing I want to do before I start the process is I want to increase the number of rays. Uh, ray tracing is much faster in TracePro, so I can afford, I can trace more rays. So I'm going to go to Define, Source Editor, and I'm going to trace a thousand rays instead of the 10 that we had before. And I'm going to run the ray trace. Turn on my ray display. And you can see right off the bat, there's three different colors of rays, red, green, and blue. Red rays have the highest flux. When that flux drops below 66.6% of the initial value, they turn green. And when it drops below 33.3% of the initial value, they turn blue. And we have other options for ray colors. You could add more levels to the the flux-based ray colors, you could have wavelength-based ray colors, source-based ray colors. So a lot of options on how you see the rays. But in this case, I want to simplify down my display a bit here. And what I want to do is I'm going to rotate my model here a little bit, and I'm going to turn off my ray display. And then I want to select the top surface of my sample here. And I'm going to go back and I'm going to turn my rays back on again and then go to Analysis, Ray Sorting, and say Selected Surface. So now I see just the rays hitting that particular surface. A little easier to see what's happening. They are pretty much following the path that we want, and they're coming down and hitting my sample here. Now initially here I have fluorescence turned off. So even though this is a fluorescent object, we're not tracing the fluorescent emissions from that. So to do that, I'm going to go to Ray Trace, Ray Trace Options, and turn on Fluorescence, and then rerun the Ray Trace. Now this is a two-step process here. And what it does is it traces the rays from the source to the fluorescent sample, and then it calculates the emission and ray traces the fluorescent emissions from the sample. Okay, so it looks a little strange, and the reason for that is that my ray sorting is still turned on. So I'm going to change that here. I'm going to go to ray sorting, get that out of there, and I'm going to turn off, I'm going to show all rays. Which gets to be quite messy. So we can use ray sorting again here. For example, if I pick my detector, and then I have a surface here named receiver, that's where the light is hitting, I could say, let's look at the rays hitting that selected surface. So now we see only the rays that are getting there. Then we can see, for example, if I was actually making this system, I'd be concerned about these rays. They're coming off the sample and they're actually reflecting off of the the filter here. But in this design I kept the sort of the system fairly open so we could see the ray paths. In reality there'd be a lot more structure around here and we'd probably be able to block these quite easily. But beyond the ray tracing I, I'm interested how much light's actually hitting this detector. What's the distribution of light there? 
So with that surface selected, I'm going to go to Analysis, Irradiance Illuminance Maps. And that opens up my Irradiance Map. And first thing I'm going to do here is I'm going to right click, go into the Options. I'll turn on Smoothing. I'm going to add some color to the plot, as well as add some levels to the, uh, to the display. And here we see the light focused on our detector. Uh, a couple things we can see down here that we can see minimums and maximum and average ir irradiance values in watts per meter squared. But we can also see our total flux. And it's about 2.56 nanowatts. So we don't have a lot of power making it to the detector in this case. Uh, one thing I didn't mention is that this source was set up with a 1 watt output. So we have a very inefficient system, but now we have a starting point. You know, if we did want to go back and try to optimize this system some more, some more, we have a good reference. We know where we're starting at, and then we can see if we can improve on that. So that's how we can use TracePro to do the the optical analysis of the por of um, optical analysis portion of the design. And now I just want to do a quick summary and wrap up of what we've looked at today. Before I do that, I just want to mention some additional resources that we have available. Uh, on our website, you're going to find webinars, tutorials, and videos uh, relating to Oslo, Raviz, and TracePro. So you're more than welcome. Go check out our website. There's a lot of information there available on all of our products. But for a quick summary, uh, you may find that some optical design problems uh, may require more than one software tool. And Oslo, Raviz, and TracePro allow you to use the best tool for the job in each part of the design process. As we've shown, you can easily export files from Oslo to use them in Raviz and TracePro, uh, as well as you can also easily share files between Raviz and TracePro. We do encourage you, if you have any questions, please visit our website, www.lambdares.com or uh, please feel free to contact us by phone 978-486-0766 or email sales at lambdares.com. And I should also mention uh, we do offer a free 14-day trial for qualified users. Uh, so if you're interested in that, please either visit the website or contact us. So with that, I'd like to say thank you to everybody and I hope everyone has a good day.